It was a completely normal, boring school day. I was in 7th period math, and the clock showed 2.45pm, which means the school day was nearly done. As it was a Friday, and spring break was just around the corner, you could feel everyone getting antsy in their seats. A lot of people had tests and whatnot, whereas my class got to have fun. We had a super laid-back teacher who loved to entertain us as much as possible. We lucked out in that sense. Me and my girlfriend Haley were messing around in the back, talking about something that occurred earlier that day. When it happened, the alarm for the lockdown went off, and the principal came over the loudspeaker. Now, for some context, typically a teacher would yell lockdown three times if it was a drill. We were always told if it was four times, it was not a drill. The reason for this was to hide the fact that we knew someone was in the building with malicious intent. Four times we heard the word lockdown. Now, I've gotten so used to hearing it only three times that I paid no attention to how many times lockdown was even said. The teacher did the usual, turning off the lights, closing the door, and ushering us to the back corner of the room where we couldn't be seen from the glass on the door. Our classroom had two doors, one at the front and one at the back. In the midst of all the commotion, me and Haley did the one thing you should never do in a lockdown. We snuck out of the class. We were now in the hallway on the third floor. Everything looked so weird. Not a single person in sight other than the two of us. A sort of humming noise came from the walls, indicating the school had cut all the power. I thought this was weird, as I thought it was only a drill. Hey, why would they cut off the power if it's just a drill? I asked. This was when we really started to question if it was actually a drill or not. But with us being stupid teenagers, we brushed it off as nothing. We continued roaming the halls when we started to hear a sound. We got really creeped out by this, as no one was supposed to be outside the class. Fearing it was a teacher, we ran into the nearest bathroom to hide. We ran into the fourth stall that was tucked into the corner and hid. We sort of just sat there, giggling, thinking we outsmarted the teacher. Maybe about 30 seconds had passed, and we started to hear the footsteps again, but this time much closer. My heart froze. We could tell it was right outside the door. At this point, we were sure we'd been caught. We kept as quiet and as still as possible, hoping not to make a sound. It was really weird though. The person outside hadn't come in yet, but they hadn't left either. If they left, we would have clearly heard their footsteps leaving, but we never heard them. Haley pointed this out to me, and that's when we started taking the situation a bit more seriously. The door opened, and someone stepped in. I was about to walk out of the stall and apologize for sneaking off when Haley stopped me. She whispered to me, Isn't it protocol for teachers to ask if there's anyone in the bathroom? She was right. This wasn't normal teacher behavior, and that's when the heart-dropping realization hit us. Whoever was in the bathroom with us wasn't a teacher. While contemplating what to do, the silence was broken. I know you're in there. My heart dropped as the person said that. The voice was younger, and it obviously wasn't a teacher. We were practically crying at this point, unable to hold it back. The guy was now directly in front of the stall door. He started pounding on the door, and screaming like a madman. <laughs> As this was happening though, I heard the door open again, followed by the familiar voice of my teacher, Mr. Taylor. Hey, what the hell are you doing? I heard a scuffle outside, and I immediately rushed to aid my teacher. Eventually we got the guy held down and the cops were called. Apparently, the man was an escapee from a mental asylum near the school, and thankfully, no one got hurt. I don't know if any of you guys remember a few years ago when a sort of killer clown craze shook America for a few months. Well, this all happened during that time. I always remembered me and my friends thought it was funny, and we'd always watch those clown caught on camera videos that were really popular at lunch. Although, our laughter turned into fear when we were made aware that a few of those clowns on Twitter threatened to come to our school at 11am that day and quote unquote kill all of us. Luckily, the school picked up on this, and they sent out emails to the parents that they had scheduled a planned lockdown at 10.30 that day in response to the threats. I was sitting in history class when I heard the familiar sound of the lockdown alarm, followed by the teacher rushing to the windows and door, locking and closing them. Even though initially the threat freaked me out, I wasn't worried at this point. I reasoned that it was most likely just another blank threat online, and that nothing would happen. After about 40 minutes of silence, sitting on the cold floor in the corner of the room, the emergency green flashing light turned off, then followed by the air conditioning, slowly falling silent, and then the hallway light switched off. The school had cut the power, but why though? 
At this point, me and my classmates were staring at each other. We all knew that something real was going on, as the school never cut off the power unless something serious was happening. After 10 minutes or so, we could all hear a faint banging noise from down the corridor, shortly followed by heavy and fast footsteps. Someone was running down the hallway. They started banging on the lockers and screaming. At this point, a few girls started quietly crying. Just then, the most terrifying thing ever happened. One of the men, dressed as a clown, ran up to the class door, banging and screaming. Multiple people were crying now, and one of my friends whispered to me in complete seriousness, saying we we're all going to die. I have no shame in admitting that this caused me to start crying too. I then heard the loud sound of glass shattering. The man had shattered the glass part of the door, and I could see his arm reaching through to try to unlock the door from the inside. I was frozen and in complete disbelief as to what I was witnessing. But luckily, my teacher reacted quickly, grabbing a piece of shattered glass from the ground and stabbing the man's arm before he could unlock the door. He instantly grabbed his arm back, and you could hear his screams of pain. He then quickly stepped away from the door, and his screams slowly faded down the corridor. After another two hours, the principal came on the loudspeaker, explaining everything. He said that just after 11, two men walked into the school, one holding a kitchen knife. They ran around the school, threatening to kill students and trying to break into classrooms. But once the police raided the school, only one of them was caught, and it wasn't the one who tried to break into our classroom. After the whole event, the school got over 20 buses to take the younger kids home, and the kids 9th grade and over, like me, were told to walk home in groups and call the cops if we saw anything suspicious. I had a hard week at school after that experience. I was always thinking that the men would return, this time with a gun or something, but nothing happened. This, nonetheless, will be scarred into my mind forever. Ever since the lockdown, the school has hired a few more on-campus police officers, and they've installed some auto-locking features on doors and windows. This has made me feel a little bit better in school, but this isn't just an experience you can simply forget about. I live in the middle of nowhere. The school I go to has maybe 500 students in total. It's enough for everyone to know everyone's name. Regardless, this day our school went on lockdown. That familiar, yet eerie chime of our principal's voice saying to remain in our classes until further notice rang through the building over the intercoms. His voice was surprisingly calm, especially considering the fact that he didn't even say it was a drill. Despite our little town, crime isn't completely unheard of. We've had our fair share of reported break-ins, robberies, and even some gang activity. I bet it's a robber down at Chase Bank, my friend Kyle joked. I laughed, and we started talking about what we actually thought the whole lockdown was for. Kyle's voice was beginning to get louder, only interrupted by our teacher Miss Sander herself shushing him. It had now been about 10 minutes of complete silence, but like most high schoolers tend to, we all lost our patience. Everyone was now talking softly to whoever they were sitting next to at this point. Just then, we all heard it. Footsteps. Not just one pair, but a few walking down the hall. We all went quiet, knowing that something was wrong, and if this was a drill, it would have been just one pair of footsteps. That being the teacher checking on the classrooms. Even Kyle, who had previously been talking, grew silent. Miss Sander moved slowly to the doorway, peering out from behind a corner. The heaviness in the air was suffocating. Just then, we heard footsteps again, seemingly doing another lap around the school. A girl across the room let out a muffled sob of fear. I focused my attention on the door. I was leaning out from behind a table to peer through the window to see if I could see anything. I'm not sure what I expected to see but whatever I was expecting, a whole lot of nothing was not it. The hallway was empty and completely dark, as it tends to be when no one was in it. The lights were all automated in my school, but just then, I noticed some of them turn on. A wave of yellow light instantly filled the room as we huddled in, casting shadows against the rows of desks. Someone somewhere tried to calm the crying girl, but I could hear their own murmured voice waver. I was still looking through the door's window from a distance at this point. But of course, as I was doing this, I saw someone walk up to the window and start looking through into the room. I instantly ducked back down behind the table the whole class was hiding behind. I felt my heart beat wildly as I heard the sound of the doorknob start to shift. My vision grew static as I pulled my knees to my chest, curling up tightly in the corner of the room. The door shook as the guy banged on it repeatedly, and as he was doing this, my biggest fear came true. The door hinges gave out, and this guy proceeded to walk into the classroom. 
all of us went silent, praying this man wouldn't walk over to the corner of the room and see all of us hiding behind this table. About a minute passed of just this guy standing there, and we could hear someone else sprinting to the door, followed by the words, Dude, we gotta go. The cops are already here. That's when I heard the guy start running out of the room and down the hall. The cops came, and a little later that was it. The guys who entered the school were never caught, and apparently they were armed with guns. The story goes that one of the kids at my school tweeted at a gang, essentially making fun of them the night before that school day. And of course, the gang took it very seriously and planned on raiding the school and killing the kid responsible. Luckily, they weren't successful, but this experience still terrifies me nonetheless.